How's it going about? It's Razine here for Astrophotography. And in today's video, something slightly different. I want to show you how I go about editing a new image. All right, so I've just took this last night. It's only five images. It's a 50 minute stack of the Flaming Star Nebula and the Tadpoles Nebula. And I just want to show you how I work around editing. I've done tutorials before, so this isn't a beginner's tutorial. If you are new to editing in Photoshop, you should probably check out one of the other videos I have. But if you're a bit more comfortable and you want to see how someone else works, go and get yourself a drink and come join me for a little ed editing episode. I will be narrating this, so I am going to be talking you through my thoughts. So with all that said, let's hop into Photoshop and see how this goes. Um, you can probably kind of already see how this is. Anyway, let's go. All right, so what we have here is the finished stacked result of the Flaming Star Nebula and the Tadpole Nebula. These were five times 10 minute long images with a triplet refractor, the ASI 2600MC and the Antlia dual narrowband filter. So what I'm gonna do is my first initial edits, which will be pulling the, pulling the image up a bit. I need to get some of this data off the left-hand side up again. And the way I do that is I use these presets called the ArcSign presets. They are free. Um, I'll try to find where I found them and put them in the description down below. So I'll do arc sign 100 and duplicate that. And that leaves me with this. And because my laptop doesn't have enough memory and it will slow down, I need to delete layers. So I'm gonna call that the original and I'm gonna do a star eliminator now to get rid of the stars. So I need to call this starless and one of them is stars or something like that. So in the starless, I go to my filter, RC Astro, star exterminator. And I'll let that run. One issue I have is I'm running on like, oh, what is this a seven year old laptop at this point <laughs> something? five year old laptop. It's got a very weak processor and not enough RAM. So this does take a while for me. Oh, we're getting there, nearly there. Right, so now that we've got the starless, I'm just gonna have to play around with these layers a little bit. So starless, copy that, invert that and set that to divide. Get the star layer underneath it, invert that, merge that down, set it to screen. So we've just the stars, starless and the original. And from here, really, the edits can begin in earnest. So what I'm going to do first is obviously do a bit more layers and curve adjustments. That's another arc sign 100. That should be fine there. And I'm just going to use the grade point dropper here to set the color balance for me. That works for me. I can tweak this a bit later. In fact, I'll do that now. It's still a bit green. So if I put another layers on it, add another curve, go to the green and just pull the black point down a little bit. I'm much more happy with that. And then I'm going to brighten up a bit. So I pull that to the clipping point, pull it over to the left, just control it a bit. And we can already see the amount of detail begin to appear. I'll, I love, love, love the ASI 2600 with this Stella Mira 90ED. It's such a powerful combination. Remember, this is only 50 minutes of data as well, but we can already see the tadpoles. It's amazing. So I've lost some contrast, so I need to bring some contrast in. It still looks a bit green. The colors are off a little bit, so I do need to fix that. So putting the curves in again. And I think it's in the blue channel. 
So let's pull the blue down a bit. And again with the green, just a bit. Yep. And then RGB, I want to, one more time, just bring that down to clip and brighten that just a little bit. I can still fix this color cast later. So that's what we had and that's what we now got. So a lot more contrast, a lot more body to the image now. I'm just gonna delete those because I have to for my laptop. So one thing I like doing, because it's a dual band filter, it gets um, hydrogen alpha as well as oxygen. So what I can do is I can go to curves And if I go into the blue channel, I'm going to use the pointer here. First of all, I'm going to select the background. And then I'm going to select this part of the nebula. Pull it up a bit. Now go to the green channel, do the same around the same areas. Pull that up a bit. You can see we begin to pull some of the blues out, some of the other colors out. This image is very much a bit too red. I much prefer that. We can see the color begin to appear now. So it's all very red. And I pull some of the blue out. This isn't enough data. I'm not gonna be able to push this as far as I want because it's just not enough data. I can try one more. So to get a good oxygen signal, really, I found that you always have to put a bit of green in the image. If you don't, you just it just doesn't work out nicely. And the reason I click here is I don't want the background to move. I just want to edit this part. So by putting an anchor here, we can see on the curves, it, it pins that in place so we don't start pulling the background up. And I think that's about as far as I'm gonna get with this amount of data. So we started with that, and now we have that. And we can see that the noises begin to take its toll. It's just, it's just bad data, really. I need a lot more. So I'm gonna address the noise a bit now. I'm going to go to filter, camera raw filter. One of my favorite tools in Photoshop, really. Gonna zoom in. So we can see there's a lot of noise in the background, a lot of noise in the nebulae. So I'm just going to go to detail, bump up the noise reduction a bit, bump up the color noise reduction. And while I'm here, I'm going to add a bit of detail back in bit of texture, a bit of clarity. I can add a bit of vibrance, but it's probably not the best right at this point. So I'm just gonna do that. Okay. Before and after. A bit of extra crispiness and extra detail. But the amazing thing about taking the stars out of the image is that whenever you apply any of these textures and clarity it will only do it to the nebulae now before it would affect the stars as well and it would start getting really crunchy so this is great i'm happy where this is going right now i need to increase the contrast because it's just not punchy enough for me now so I, I can, there is a contrast tool but i always do it through curves so if you hold alt you can actually put a mask in and you can see when you begin to clip. So I'm going to put that there. Do the same with the white, white levels. And it's what we have. And I prefer that a lot more. These are the halos from the stars, the color data that has been captured. Not much I can really do about that. If you start going in with like spot removals, you might cause more issues than it's worth. As it stands, I don't actually know a good way of removing these. So I'd like to still do some more work on the background. I think this is about as much as I'm gonna get from the nebulae itself. 
If I start punching this anymore, it's just going to introduce too much noise. Now there's two ways I can address this background. I can put a dot here and a dot on some of this dim nebulae, like here, so I know not to touch that. And I can try and pull this down and pull that back there. But I mean, that's okay. I'm going to run with that. Let's put that to one side. But what I'd normally do is actually go into select color range and I would sample the background. Now we can see because of the noise of the image, there's not a lot of data. That's why it's this really patchy background. So what I need to do, or what I do at least, is I will hold the plus, the box shift, and I'll add to that mask so I can get some of the noise in there as well. And I find that gives me a much better selection. And then I'll go to select and color range. Uh, sorry, then I'll go to select and select and mask. Feather that by about 10 pixels or 15 pixels. Punch up the contrast a little bit to define those edges a bit more. And now we have a selected the background. Now we can see on the mask what we have. So all the white is going to be affected. Okay, so we can pull the background down that way. And just to make sure that those tendril areas are okay, punch it back up there. And I find this is a much better way of dimming down the background. I prefer that. I think that looks better. Okay, so that's what we did with just level, uh, just curves. And that's what we did with curves and levels, uh, selection of masks. I much prefer this one. But you can do what you want to do. I will proceed. Right, so the noise is about where I want. If I try any more noise reduction, you just start gonna get those mottling effects and it's just gonna be nasty. The nebulae, maybe I can make it a little bit brighter. Yeah, I can see there's a magenta hue over everything. So if we try and remove or we'll add some green to the image. Just a bit of green, I don't want to add too much. I prefer how that looks. Well, let's add some vibrance to this image now. It's so easy to think you can just go nuts with these sliders, but often little is more, less is more. Especially me, I think one of my weaknesses as an editor is I like to punch too much color into things and it just starts making it look a bit bad. We could try to pull a bit more blue out of this. So if I go to hue and saturation, see we've got the blues in there. If I add some more blue saturation. It's just not too great. So I can add a bit of blue. It's not ideal. Let's 
So where we are now, I think I'm going to start doing some sharpening. And it'll be almost time to call this good. See, the, the tadpoles are being lost in the noise. Again, as I keep banging on about, if I had more, it would be better. I can't sharpen this either, nearly as far as I'd like to go. Maybe if I had a bit of texture and clarity, so. You can see how much noise that's introducing. So what I need to do actually is I need to make another copy. So this would be the original and this is the sharpening. So I'm gonna hold Alt and press the mask button. That puts a black mask over everything. And then I'm gonna use a white brush to just paint over the mask. Make sure that's flowing properly. To paint over the mask where I want this new detail and the sharpening to actually be obvious. Make the brush a bit bigger. A lot of time you won't actually see the benefit of this kind of sharpening until you zoom out. It's very subtle. So that's off and that's on, very subtle. And the next sharpening I'm going to do is the high pass sharpen. This one of my favorites. So we've got a filter of the high pass. I set it just so you can see it's picking up the detail you want to sharpen. That's okay for me. And I do a soft light. And again, we can see how much noise this filter's added into the image. So once again, we're gonna put a black mask over everything and go in with the white brush. as well. Okay, I like that. And if you want to smoothen the edge, the drop off a bit more, press the mask, go to filter blur and Gaussian blur, and just blur that a little bit more. And now just take the sharp edge transition off. From here, I think I'm nearly there. The background still seems a bit off for me. So hold Alt, Merge Visible, and that'll put it into another layer. Okay, let's see about fixing this background. It looks blue. Yeah, it's a bit blue. So take that down. And I'm happy with that. All right, I'm happy with that looks now. So all we do is we go down, get our stars image, and put it on top. And there it is. To I, starless images are interesting. You can see a lot of detail in them, but I think they aren't as nice as stars. So this is this looks nice to me. This looks better. I like how this looks. This feels good to me. And now what I'm gonna do is I have to crop this for the video so it can fit on the screen and the thumbnail nicely. So I'll go to the marquee, fixed ratio 16 by nine. And I actually framed this in a purposeful way where I can fit both of the main targets in. I need to make another master layer here. Copy that. And what I'm actually going to do is put it onto another document. And there we go. That's how I'd edit this image. I like how it came out. Detail looks good. 
I, I can only imagine what this would be like if I had, I don't know, like five, six, ten hours on it. I think it would look immense. Perseus is up a lot, so maybe, uh, or Eager is up a lot, so maybe I'll be able to add a bit more data to it. But yeah, I hope you enjoyed the video. Hope you learned something. Like I said, this wasn't so much more of a tutorial rather than a watch me edit something. I have other videos available if you want to learn how to do the initial stuff in Photoshop. But yeah, hope you enjoyed it. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. Hope you have clear skies. Keep looking up everyone, keep them cameras clicking. I'll see you later.